Hello friends, today I am back after quite long gap with one of my teaching videos. The model that I am going to discuss with you is one of the very very famous growth models and this was so simple, so elegant that it was pretty quick to understand and everybody was using this as the structure for growth. This was actually given in the tradition of linear stages model where they believed that growth process follows in a linear stage first this then this then this uh, now uh, this was also used in one of the five year plans in India so uh, I'm talking about the Harrod Dahmer model and you might have uh, gone through this model but then the way I will take you through this model that will be something that you haven't seen. So stay here, watch till end and I think you will enjoy it. And please comment, share and like. Herod gave his famous model in a book that was named Towards a Dynamic Economy. I had the privilege of having this book read in person. So uh, this was an interesting uh, model in the sense that Herod was writing in Keynesian tradition but then surpassing that. If you remember the Keynesian model it says that there will be equilibrium of saving and investment. This is same as the uh, classical model as well as the Keynesian model. Keynes said that uh, there should be equilibrium of the ex ante savings and ex post investments so that there is no surplus or any thing remaining in the economy. But then uh, if this is a snapshot picture of the economy, what if we have to talk about such equilibrium in a growing economy? So it means rather than just one equilibrium that we had at T0, we need to have another equilibrium at T1, another equilibrium at T2 and the economy is moving from here to here it's moving between equilibriums. So this brings in the dynamics in the Keynes's otherwise static model. Another point uh, was that uh, was the multiplier thing. So whenever there is any change in income, we spend some portion of this that is determined by our MPC and that expenditure that I am making that becomes someone else's income. So then that further induces some expenditure as well as uh, some income. The expenditure that I made that became someone else's income and then that person will also make some expenditure out of it depending on the MPC. So this is increasing the demand in the economy. To meet this there should be some supply of savings also so that new investment can be made. So uh, this determines the equilibrium. Now the question that Harrod asked was that if changes in income are inducing investment, uh, what should be the rate of change uh, of income or rate of growth of income for the ex ante uh, savings that is the planned savings or uh, they are going to equal ex ante uh, investments so that uh, there is a moving equilibrium in the economy 
So this is the question that Herod asked. So for this, we will be using three different growth rates to answer this particular question. One is uh, the actual rate of growth, the growth rate at which the economy is actually moving at that time. Another is the warranted rate of growth. What is the desired rate of growth so that everybody is satisfied and we are moving to equilibriums. And the last will be the natural rate of growth that we will talk about later. So let us see these growth rates one by one. So the first one is actual rate of growth. You can call this G or G A, whatever you want to call it. So this is given by Z is the ratio of S by C. And what these are? Here S is the ratio of savings to national income. So we know that this S is actually capital S by Y that is savings to national income savings by national income and then c is the actual incremental capital output ratio so regarding this c thing so this is i c o r or simply c o r capital output ratio what is capital output ratio this is the amount of capital required to produce an one more unit of output. So now coming back to this, uh, we can actually uh, write this C also as delta K by delta Y. How many units of capital, additional capital we need to produce one unit of output this delta k is nothing but new investment net investment so i upon y then so this is what you can think of this particular thing c here now let's substitute uh, this s by y and uh, this um, i upon delta y for C, then what we are going to get, then we are going to get S upon Y, I upon delta Y. So you are going to get delta Y upon Y. And delta Y upon Y is nothing but the rate of growth of income of course we are assuming that s is equal to i saving is equal to investment so this uh, we realize that this is the actual rate of growth g okay so this is my g now the second is warranted rate of growth The name itself tells that this is what we desire and why do we desire this so we need to understand why we are desiring so this is the rate of growth which if we are able to attain this this will leave all the parties satisfied uh, they will believe that they have neither overproduced nor underproduced as well as the uh, people who are saving they will realize that they have not under saved or over saved so this is something that is making all the part agents in the economy satisfied so uh, we can also say that this warranted rate of growth is the rate that induces just enough investment to match plant savings and therefore uh, keeps capital fully implied. There is no unemployment of capital or over employment of capital. So nothing like that is happening. Right. So we know that the plans to save are given as plans to save. This will be 
total s the savings small s into y now what is this small s this is my propensity to save this is something that is a psychological thing how much i want to save out of my total earnings and the demand for investment is given as this will be cr is equal to delta kr by delta y now uh, y delta by kr and cr this is the this is called accelerator coefficient that accelerator coefficient this is the required amount of extra capital or investment that i need to produce one unit of output at a given rate of interest and this is determined by the technological conditions of the economy delta kr is the net capital formation that has happened so i am writing this as i upon delta y this is my third equation okay so after this what i am going to do uh, i am going to say that uh, the demand for investment how this will be coming as demand for investment is given as i is equal to cr cr is the uh, capital output ratio uh, required capital output ratio so this uh, we need uh, as the demand for investment now if we want the planned savings to be equal to planned investment so our planned investment part is this and our planned saving is this so for these two to be equal we need for planned savings to equal planned investment we need that s up y is equal to cr into delta y so now this is going to give me again a uh, interesting thing i am just transposing things from one side to another so i will get delta y upon y should be equal to s upon cr this is the warranted rate of growth and this is giving me the moving equilibrium in an economy so uh, this if gw prevails then we are going to have a dynamic equilibrium in a growing economy okay so now so this is the gw that the required thing and then we had something that was uh desired one so now that was the actual one sorry so now for equilibrium in the economy what should happen that what i desired or what is required is equal to what is happening i need to have g is equal to gw so if this is happening then we have our short run equilibrium in a moving economy so uh, if it is not then what happens so let us see so what happens if uh, let's say g is greater than gw 
so now you know that g is the actual rate of growth gw is the required or warranted rate of growth then this is actually uh, simple to understand the economy is growing much faster than is required to everyone happy it means the there is a lot more demand for investment than the savers can supply the savings for so what we are looking at we are looking at a situation of inflation there is a lot of demand so the actual investment is less than what is required to required investment to meet the increase in output so economy is galloping into an inflationary situation what will happen if the converse is uh, there that is uh, if g is less than gw then we have slowed down the actual rate of growth is much less than what is required in the what is warranted in the economy then i have surplus of savings and capital the actual investment that is taking place is much less than what the savers are supplying for investment so it means there is output remaining that is not being totally utilized so we are not producing much then because i am not able to finish the past savings past investment the output so why should i make any new investment so this will make my capital unutilized so that's the problem now see the inherits model unlike the previous models this equilibrium is actually called knife edge equilibrium knife edge because any deviation between gw is equal to gr will be not self correcting it will actually keep on aggravating so i give you a, a better example think of this you are in gym and you are going to run on a treadmill so you have set the speed of treadmill that is let's say 10 km per hour so now your body needs to run at 10 km per hour so that you stay on the treadmill you are not thrown off it but then in the first situation this one you are actually running at a speed of let's say 15 km per hour on a treadmill that requires you to run only at 10 km per hour then what is going to happen you are this treadmill is going like this you are actually moving like this your speed is much faster so there will be a divergence and you will be actually you will climb up the treadmill and then you will uh, go and hit the gym wall or something because you are running much faster so you are not stationary on the treadmill on the other hand when you are running slower than the treadmill treadmill is moving at 10 km per hour and you are moving only at let's say uh, 7 km per hour then there is again a divergence between these two and what will happen that your the, there is a relative motion of minus 3 because treadmill is running at 10 and you are running at 7 only so ultimately you will be thrown in this direction so you will be thrown backwards from the treadmill so you are not stable so both these situations are called knife edge equilibrium in the herrets model now uh, if this is true then actually an economy that started diverging either in inflationary pressure or deflationary pressure should continue doing that but then that is not something that we always observe in the long run it means there is something missing from this that we haven't talked about yet we will talk about that in one minute just let me introduce you to dormer model because i said this is hair at dormer model and till now 
I am not I have not discussed at all about Dahmer. So if C D Dahmer was writing separately, I think hundreds of kilometers away from Herod and without knowing that Herod is also working on this thing. And she came with a model, though she asked slightly different questions, and then their conclusions are similar. So I will show you that how we can derive Herod's result from the Dahmer model. 